Let's go over how to make your own custom brushes for sports design. So really any photo or any image you find can become a brush. We're gonna go over five examples today, how to turn the photo into a brush and then how to apply it to your next design. All the photos and textures you see in this video I got from unsplash.com. It's a great free resource for stock images. So the first brush we're gonna look at today is creating your own fog brush. And for this, you're gonna wanna find an image, ideally of clouds. See how this clouds image I got has kind of this like wispy, foggy look set on this blue background. You also have these more like pillowy cotton candy clouds. That could also be a brush. You could use that for smoke or for your own clouds to just brush in clouds. But we're gonna focus on this kind of wispy, fog-like texture. So the first step to converting anything to a brush is to make it black and white. And we're gonna do that with a gradient map. So let's go down to our adjustment layers, go to gradient map, and we want a black to white gradient map. And I'm just gonna move these sliders close to each other because I want some more contrast. We're basically isolating which parts of the image we want to show up in the brush. So like if you move the sliders super close together, you'll see there's a ton of contrast. All the brush is gonna show are these high contrast areas. And then you can reveal more of the image just by keeping them a little bit further apart. So we wanna kind of find a balance. I'm eyeing kind of this bottom part of the fog in the clouds. I wanna reveal enough of it, but I wanna make sure there's enough contrast still. Something around here feels pretty good. So let's hit okay. We've got some good fog detail in this middle portion of the image. I'm gonna crop this whole thing in because what we'll end up saving is, is just this part. So let's crop this in. C is the shortcut for your crop tool. Drag these inward. And we don't wanna save it just yet. I wanna clean up some of these edges. Like we've got this gray fading into the edge here and this will basically make a sharp cut off with the brush and I wanna get rid of that. I'm gonna make a new layer on top of everything and just with a black brush, we can just go back to our, our default soft round brush. I'm gonna start brushing just the edges of this to kind of make it fade out. And we can definitely remove most of this bottom gray part. We don't need that. But it is kind of nice with fog specifically to have some more opaque parts and then like the gray parts in here, for example, are gonna be a little bit more transparent. And now I've set this up so the white part I'm imagining is the brush that we're gonna save. But when you save it in Photoshop, it's actually gonna take all the black parts of the image and create that into a brush. So all we gotta do is invert the image, then we'll be ready to save it. So first I'm gonna stamp this image onto its own layer going to a new layer and then the shortcut command option shift E and then command I is gonna invert it. So now the black is what we're gonna save as a brush. So you can go up to edit, define brush preset and we'll call this foggy brush one. And we can go over to an example graphic and I'll show you what this looks like. Let's just eyedropper this gray color and on the new layer, you'll see I've got the brush selected, foggy brush one. We'll bring the size a good bit down and take caps lock off so we can see what we're doing. I'm just gonna click once and you can see it's creating this fog and it doesn't have any like harsh edges. And so you can use this general technique. You can make whatever kind of fog brush you're looking for. Obviously this one is a pretty horizontal one. You can use more of the, the poofy cloud look as well using that same process. Next up, we're gonna go over and look at this dirt splatter texture. And we're gonna create a brush just from this spray that the bike is making. So same process as before. I'm gonna set my default colors to black and white just by hitting D on the keyboard. And now when I make a gradient map, it'll automatically default to black and white. So we can open it up and again, adjust the contrast. And remember, I'm just looking at this bottom left corner because I know that's the part that I'm gonna save. And now to crop it, I'm actually gonna take my rectangular marquee tool and can hit M on the keyboard. And let's just draw a rectangle box down here and hit C Then hit return a couple times. And now we're left with this dirt that we have isolated from the rest of the image. Again, I'm gonna clean up these edges. So let's go new layer and I'm gonna brush in white back with my normal soft brush just on the edges 
of this one as well. Same thing as last time, just wanna clean this up so we don't get any harsh edges in the final. Kinda of like how it's a little bit uneven, kinda of more narrow in the bottom right. Now with this one, because the black parts of the image, I'm fine with saving these as the brush. Let's just go up to edit, define brush preset. We'll call this dirt splatter one. And now you can see when we go back to our example graphic, I'll turn off this fog and we'll make a new layer. For this one, I'm actually gonna mess with the brush settings and I'll show you why. If you open up your brush settings, you've got all these little boxes that you can check. This first shape dynamics panel is pretty cool. You can change the angle jitter, which basically means when you brush in a straight line, it'll keep changing the angle of the brush automatically. It just makes it so it looks a little bit more imperfect and a little bit more natural. You can see what the brush is doing as I mess with the angle jitter and make this like 90%. You can also do a size jitter, so it changes sizes automatically as you use it. Maybe we do a little bit of that. And then you can also play with, under this transfer menu, the flow and the opacity. If you wanted that to vary, basically how hard the brush was pressing down. I think we'll just keep ours at zero for this example, but that's something you might wanna play with with your fog brushes. So if we wanna make little spatters of dirt coming off his foot, we can set the foreground color to some kind of gray to match this graphic. And maybe we click once there. And you can also play with the flow of this brush too, just make it a little bit softer. So kind of make a, a cleaner spray coming off the foot and maybe we have some off the back foot as well. Let's move on to this grunge texture and this is almost just like paint strokes. I mean grunge is such a broad term. Again same concept let's go to our gradient map start creating some contrast. I'm eyeing this brush stroke kind of right in the middle going up towards the top of the design. Make sure these are close enough together. Something like that, we'll hit okay. Back to our rectangular marquee tool. We will crop this image like so. And again, I wanna clean up the edges. So this one, I can be a little bit more precise. I'm gonna take a hard brush and like I don't need any of this gray over here. So let's just crank the flow back up to 100 and brush over this gray. I'm just eyeing the white right now. We can invert it again at the end. And then I also wanna go kinda in line with this brush stroke. Maybe we take a, a charcoal brush, which should come preloaded on your Photoshop, but I just wanna keep it kinda this rough edge. Maybe we keep a little of this side one, but then this top part, I'm just gonna kinda like squiggle up and down to make it a little bit uneven. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's again stamp this image on its own layer. New layer, Command Option, Shift E, and then we'll invert it with Command I. So now we're saving this black part as a new brush. We'll define brush preset, grunge brush one. And you can see we'll come back to our Sean Mott graphic. So for this, it's, it's naturally gonna be a, a vertical brush, which you know you might paint around and play with in your design, but we can also rotate it to make it more horizontal or more of a slant. And so, I don't know, something like this, and maybe you have some text down below. It can be a good way to divide up your design. It's also a good way to kind of make little boxes or text boxes more uneven. So if you just drew out a normal box and put a mask on it, you can go to your grunge brush and start erasing parts of it, ideally with a high flow. So again, just a way you can kind of muddy things up a bit, make things a little bit more grungy. Brush number four, we're gonna look at this ripped texture. We're gonna make our own ripped brush. So for this one, I like the contrast we're getting from like the, the more closely ripped places to the places that are still full paper. So I'm gonna look for a spot like this where they're, they're relatively close together. And this ripped image obviously is already black and white, so we don't need a gradient map. Maybe actually let's do this area up here. So I'm gonna take rectangular marquee tool again and just draw a box like this. And we'll hit C, return, return. And now similar to the last one, I'm just gonna make these edges a little bit rougher instead of the, we could use this grunge brush to, to achieve this effect, but 
Let's pretend we didn't just make that and we'll use a, a charcoal pencil again. But same idea, I just wanna make it relatively imperfect looking. This looks good to me, so let's repeat the process. New layer, Command Option Shift E, Command I to invert it, and then we'll save this as a new brush. Define brush preset, ripped paper brush one. And we'll go back to our example graphic. This one, I'm also gonna mess with the brush settings. So let's pull up our options. We're gonna create more angle jitter on this one. So this kind of gives it this random ripped feel, which is good. And now you can see if I brush in white, you know, you get somewhat of a ripped texture where it's kind of got these uneven edges, some of them more opaque than others. And you could do it with bigger brush too. And you can always play with a ripped paper effect. If you want to add a drop shadow, go down to your effects, go to drop shadow, and just something relatively subtle like this, maybe like a 30% opacity. Probably don't want to do too much for the size, but can help make it feel like you're separating out the ripped paper from the rest of the design. And this is a good reminder that not everything has to be turned into a brush. I feel like a brush is a good shortcut to using a texture, but we could just use this original texture. If we just undid the edits we made and we're back to our normal texture, you can bring this in to our example graphic as, as a full texture and just set the blend mode to screen. But if you're looking for shortcuts, obviously brushes can be the way to go. The last brush we're gonna make is a flare brush and we're gonna do this ourselves. We're not gonna use an image. I'm just gonna make a new Photoshop document. 1080 by 1080 is fine. With a black brush, I'm gonna make this a soft round brush, we'll set the flow back to 100. Let's make a new layer and just click once in the middle of the design, then Command T to transform it. I'm gonna scale it down holding Option and we're just gonna make it this flattened shadow shape. Now I'm gonna duplicate this layer with Command J, then rotate it 90 degrees. You can go up to Edit, Transform, Rotate 90 degrees. You could also do Command T and drag from one of these corners. And then once you have this plus sign shape, all you gotta do is add a little dot in the middle. Same thing, soft brush. We'll do it on new layer, maybe about there. And now we can define this as a brush preset. So you go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, call this Custom Flare 1. And now we'll go back to our example graphic. I mean, these you'll generally brush in white, but you can see it kind of gives this like sparkle shine. And you can play with the angle of this or make it at a random angle. Again, if you go back to your brush settings, I would encourage you to do shape dynamics and crank the angle jitter up to 100. You know, you could paint with this brush if you wanted to, but really I like the idea of kind of having random sparkles and probably doesn't make the most sense for this design, but we're doing it anyway. So those are five brushes you can create yourself for your next sports graphic. Hopefully you have a good feel of the process of creating these brushes and can go out and make your own from your own library of photos. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.